came full circle. All I know, that was one of the hardest things I've ever done, only because it seemed like the people thought that you can do this on the drop of a hat or just by them applauding or holding up that sign. I made my own calls in the dugout. Well, I, every time, every now and then, I would tell the guys I'm going to get him, and they'll look at me and they'll go, how can he say that? He just squibbled two or three ground balls on the dirt like this, and then all of a sudden he said he's going to get the guy. The next, and I get him, and they just, how does he do this? He's, you know, there's no sign of me being on a pitcher or whatever, but, you know, you would do that. But that was, that was pretty awesome to get that out of the way. It, it was nerve-wracking. It really was. Cal has often said that you looked at him or came in that day and said, I'm "Oh yeah," <laughs> and and the whole thing of it being the same day, right. just a year apart. I had no idea that was the day, the year before that he had tied Garrick's record. So we're there, and I came in, and I just said, "Hey, I'm doing it today," and he goes, "Okay." Then knowing him, well, why are you doing it? I said, "Nobody's talked to me." I said, I feel so good. I said, I know I'm going deep. And then all of a sudden we go out to run our sprints and I ran the first one. I turn around to run the second one and I go, oh, hell no. <laughs> you know, it was just, uh, it bothered me that it was, and he said, you've already said it, you got to go deep. And then the rain started and, you know, I was able to push it out under the 12 o'clock hour. What does a good Orioles team mean to this city? Oh, it means a lot. I mean, I think the people are, really get turned on. You know, when this when the club plays like they're playing right now, I can just see it when I watch the games on TV, how the fans are racked, how the fans, I can't think of all the words now, guys, but the, the fans really show you what's going on. The young people especially, they're, they're really up for it, and uh, that's, it, it excites me. Any final questions? What does it mean to both of you to still be so loved by this fan base today? Eddie? Brooksy? No, well, it's been wonderful. <laughs> I've been here, living here year-round since uh, 1960, I guess. And I've enjoyed every minute of it. My wife uh, grew up in Canada. She's not too happy about it with the weather like this. But uh, I've, I've enjoyed every every year I've been here. And... Uh, uh, I just said I get to watch a lot of baseball here. Well, for me, it wasn't always ups and uh, there was some downs here. But uh, me personally, I loved, uh, you know, just proving people. Uh, you know, there were some reporters that didn't particularly care for me or whatever. You played. And that's all I was brought here to do was to play. Those guys will tell you there's not one person on that field that had more fun than me. And... Uh, might not have looked like it, but trust me, I had a lot of fun out there. Yeah. Well, my last year was Eddie's first year. And, uh, I mean, there were a lot of, from what I understand, no one wanted to, Eddie to come to spring training. And he was invited by Earl, and they put him in the game, and he never stopped hitting. And uh, that was the good part of it. The same way as Ripken. The only guy who wanted Ripken to play shortstop was Earl Weaver. And he shifted him to shortstop, and... He was unbelievable. Yeah. So managers know a lot. Yes, they do.